how do I stop musicians from telling bad jokes about drummers not being musicians? Have you ever thought about it? But what if I tell you that I got some tools to help you out? Check this out. Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Vladar one more time and I have this killer lesson for you. The purpose of this lesson is really to dive in orchestration, musicality when it comes to playing music. Before we start, if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing and hitting on the bell notification button so you are the first one to know when I come up with new content. In today's era, we are all trying to promote our playing across the social media platforms, YouTube, everything on the internet. This is an excellent tool. But what if I tell you the more musical you can be, the more chances you have of getting hired? I want to give you some tools to use in order to make your play along or drumless tracks more musical, especially the ones that come without any particular drum part as a guidance. Coming up with creative drum parts beyond just chopping over a loop could be a challenge, especially if your musical references or band playing experiences are very limited. I like to use a loop track example available for free on the internet for everyone. I will leave a link in the description where you can get this track. It's freedrumlesstrack.net. And this track is called Fusion 019. This loop can be used to groove, orchestrate a solo, it's good for practice and it's good for making a song. This particular track is very syncopated. I like to think it as a 16 note subdivision driven song. The first step we will take is to learn the melody. The second step will be to fit in a groove and think about orchestration as well. And the third step, which is optional, it will be soloing over that loop, but at the same time thinking about orchestration. Bear with me in this lesson. The most important word I want to use is orchestration. Orchestration is very important when it comes to play musically. This loop, like I said, is 16 note driven and I like to always, in order to get the melody, I look for the rhythm and I start tapping 16 notes on my chest. Let's say in the case of this song is 120 bit per minute. The song goes like this, like about here. So. One yana, two yana, three yana, four yana, one yana, two yana, three yana, four yana. Okay? This is the pause. So the hits of the melody are pa 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 sabara pa 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 ra sabara ra pa 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 ra para para pa para para Sarapapapapara that's it, that's the whole thing, okay? Let's listen to one full part of the loop so you can get what I was trying to say. the loop and it just repeats and then at the end has those little hits what I do is 
I take this part slow first. Okay, I play the 16 notes, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a pa 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 Okay, and you can keep doing the whole thing. Once I learn how to sing the melody, then I take it to the snare drum. And we play all the accents in 16 notes. The second step will be play a groove on top of the loop, thinking about orchestration and syncopation. Sometimes you ask yourself, what are my choices? What can I take? Remember, the drums have different sounds. You know, some sounds are short and attacky, some other sounds are long. So you want to think about that when you orchestrate. A lot of times, this is how you can tell a difference about a musical drummer and somebody who just plays a beat on top of anything. Why do I say this? Because as drummers, we really have to keep our ears open to what's happening around us. You all have heard that very famous quote out there where people says, like, your band is only as good as the drummer. Let's dive in. For the third step, which is optional, you know, soloing and thinking about orchestration as well every time you play, the most basic orchestration practice that you can do is take any rudiment, single strokes, doubles, paratibles, start playing them on the snare drum, then play them around the set in order, and then play with no particular order. So as you start listening to what you're doing, Start making your choices, what's more musical, what's less musical. That is totally up to you. And as I said before, you only can reference what's musical and what is not musical by listening to records, listening to all these drummers who came before us and listen to their choices. Learn from there and eventually you will take your own choices and hopefully make good ones. Let's check it out. Now that we have experimented with all three steps, what I will do in order to show you a complete example, 
of the whole situation of this loop, I will play a full circle of the loop with groove, thinking about orchestration, making hopefully nice choices. And then I will do another round with soloing, and then I'll do another round with groove. Okay, let's check it out. a couple of things to say that you can hopefully use them as well to make your own loops musical. First, when you're playing, if you hear a motive, don't just play two and four, that's cool. I'm not saying anything is wrong with that. If you wanna make a difference and really dive down into the music, try to shape your groove with the different melodies, with the bass line, every motive that is happening around you. I'm not saying catch it all, as you can see in some of my examples, I did not catch every single hit or every single motive, but the point of it is that when you catch some of it and when you align your playing to some of it, then you evolve from playing on top of any loop or any groove or any music. You evolve to immerse yourself within the music and that's when musicians go like, oh, this guy can play, oh, this guy can listen. So one thing you want to do first time you listen to a loop before you play, listen to the motives and play the quarter note on top of it. See what you can hear. For me, it was easy to play this loop because as I play the quarter note and I start listening to the hits, I already know that all those hits are 16 note based. And that's one of the reasons why I tell you, hey, go back and watch my first video, The Power of the Subdivisions. The Power of the Subdivisions, the Table of Time, all of that, comes into place when we are playing music. Hopefully you get to a point that when you're playing, you don't have to think about all these things. Another thing I try to do, especially in the parts where I was playing the groove, was to hopefully keep the backbeat. That way you don't lose the drive of the groove. If you're playing hits around a groove, make sure that your two and four is always there. For example, if you're doing, you know, to, that kind of thing if you're playing hits try as much as you can 
to keep the back pain going on. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, share with your friends, look down below to my Amazon links. Remember, I get a little commission and this commission will help me to keep making videos for you. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next one. <music>